Here we are on the Motorola, sorry, Mortirolo. There's Nanny McPhee there, dying on his feet, or his seat, rather. We've gone about uh, 2k, maybe 3k. Uh, it's been around about 10, 11, 12% average. We've had some 17% ramps, some 18% ramps. Uh, I'm going to be stopping quite a few times and may even do some walking. Well done. Good job. Well done, John. Cole, are you going to the cafe? Yes. Okay. I'm going to the cafe. I'll yeah. see you down there in a minute. Here we are. The summit of the Motorola. Motorola. Probably the toughest climb I've ever done. And there's Pedro, our fabulous guide. Say hello, Pedro. Well done, Julian. Thank you. And that's the climb goes up through the forest, so you don't get any beautiful views. In any case, you're just looking at the ground, a meter in front of your wheel. What a climb! the really big one and that's the Paso de la Mortirolo. Now there were various routes that we could have done. Uh, one of the routes was about 60 miles and took in a couple of coals and headed into Switzerland uh, before either arriving at the hotel or climbing the Mortirolo. Or one could go down the valley uh, on a pretty straight downhill run for about uh, 18 miles or so and then climb the Motorola and descend back to Grossio town which is where our hotel was located. About half of the group decided to do the longer route and about half of the group decided to do the shorter route and I was in the group that decided to do the shorter route. So we had a lovely fast descent along the valley following the river near to the motorway a uh, bit of excitement at one point, uh, we took a wrong turning and ended up in a tunnel which was about four kilometres long. Uh, it certainly seemed never ending and when we got out the other side a car stopped and said to us you're not supposed to be in that tunnel and in fact he was right so we had to jump over a fence and chuck our bikes over the fence as well and find the correct road that we should have been on. So we went through a couple of villages, including Grossio, the location of our hotel, and quite an attractive village it was too. Uh, and then we headed up the Mortirolo. Now, the Mortirolo was described by Lance Armstrong as the toughest climb he has ever done. And I would have to say that, like Lance Armstrong, I would say it is the toughest climb I've ever done. 
It is 12 kilometers long and it averages 10.8% over its length. But there is a section in the middle of about six kilometers or so which doesn't fall below 13%. There are uh, about 30, 35 um, hairpin bends um, uh, which give you a little bit of respite but frankly that's the only respite that you get and when it goes down to 10% or so which it does on a couple of occasions you actually feel as if you're going downhill you've spent so much time going uphill it was a brutal climb it goes up through the forest uh, it's a very narrow road not in particularly good condition and it was fairly damp so there is uh, sort of hay and fallen leaves and so forth on the road and if you do try and stand up with the damp conditions if your wheel catches some of that uh, foliage you lose traction pretty quickly whereas sitting down uh, is pretty painful after a while we stopped about four or five times uh, partly for a breather partly to have a drink and something to eat and we also stopped at the Pantani Memorial. Uh, there is a kind of statue of him uh, leaning over his bike and it's on the side of uh, a building, a house I imagine, and it's, it's about eight, ten feet up off the ground. So you have to be careful and make sure you're looking out for it because it is possible to miss it. Because when you're on a climb like that, you, spend to spend, you tend to spend a lot of the time looking at the ground about a meter in front of your wheel and unless you look up you're going to miss these kind of sights. Uh, the last three kilometers or so are a little bit easier, it probably goes down to about nine or ten percent on average but that felt fabulous. So we finally got to the top, uh, crested the summit and there was Pedro to take our photograph and we have certainly had a great feeling of relief. Uh, me and uh, Nanny McPhee uh, rolled down the other side for about 500 metres and found uh, a sort of refuge come uh, restaurant, I suppose, uh, although it was empty apart from us. Uh, we had a very nice cappuccino and I had a Twix bar, uh, first, first Twix I've had for a long time. And then we retraced our steps and descended the climb on a, a different route, which is a longer route and it's supposed to be not quite so difficult than the classic route which was the one that we did although certainly it was a pretty tough descent quite a lot of hairpin bends uh, quite a lot of steep sections although you could certainly get up some speed we got back into uh, Grosio relatively early and so uh, Nanny McPhee and I decided to have something to eat in the hotel restaurant and fabulous it was too uh, Nanny McPhee had, uh, had some soup which came in two bowls, which I thought was rather odd. Um, we were in our cycling kit, by the way, so I don't know what the other people thought of it, because it was quite a posh restaurant. Uh, and then we both had loin of lamb, which turned out to be about half a dozen uh, very rare loin chops, and they were delicious. They sat on a bed of, uh, well, it seemed like grass, actually, grass or hay, and I did venture to uh, see whether it was edible um, and for the rest of the meal I was picking out bits of grass and hay from my mouth it was it was not edible certainly the rest of it was delicious so then it was uh, take the bikes apart and put them away now I was first into the garage which is uh, a short distance away from the hotel and is an electric shutter so you press a button and the shutter goes up. Unfortunately, it doesn't stay up. And every 40 seconds or so, it started to come down. I was the only person in the garage at that point. Uh, and every 40 seconds, I had to press that bloody button to make the garage door go up again. And by the time I'd finished my bike, I had run out of swear words as I'd spent so much time cursing this bloody garage door. Anyway, managed it. Uh, then had a shower and got changed and then met up with Roz and we decided to have a wander around the town and it is a beautiful town. Uh, it was very warm, very blue sky, sun was shining, uh, very interesting buildings and a couple of fabulous churches. Uh, one church we went inside, it was enormous inside, a whole series of frescoes on the walls, beautifully decorated. So we had a nice wander around, took a nice lot of photographs and finally I found a gelateria and had an ice cream and you'll want to know what flavour it was lemon, uh, peach 
and pistachio. The pistachio was green, but it didn't, apart from that, taste of pistachio. Anyway, it was very nice. So, came back to the room, uh, had a shower, finished my packing, made this video. See you next time.